Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our Resource Gatherer AI. We're going to add support for multiple gatherers. Let's begin. So here's what we have so far. Here is the gatherer, and here are multiple nodes. If I click on this node in here, the gatherer goes to it, he mines it three times, one, two, three. When the node is depleted, he takes it to storage. And right now he's waiting for another order. Now if I tell him to go and mine this node in here, he's going to go, he's going to mine it, one, two, three, that one is depleted, goes to storage, and now he automatically searches for another node located near the one that he was told to mine. When all the nodes nearby the original order position have been depleted, he waits for another order again. So, yep, he finished mining all of these, and now he's again waiting for an order, and again I can tell him to go somewhere. Okay, great. So now let's add support for controlling our gatherer, but with multiple gatherers. We're going to set it up to first select the gatherer we want to order, and then give him the specific order. On the gatherer game object, let's begin by adding a selected circle. So let's go into the gatherer game object, here you can see. The gatherer is not visible since the animation system only runs when the game is running, but you can see by the shadow the character is placed around here. Okay, so we want to add a circle to display when the gatherer is selected. So let's create an empty game object and let's name this selected circle. I'm going to add a sprite renderer component and drag this circle texture in here. Yep, there you go, there's the circle. Now let's place it to roughly the same thing as his shadow. Okay. All right, so we have our selected circle sprite completed. So this is the sprite that will be displayed when the gatherer is selected. So let's start off with it disabled. It will be enabled when we actually select the gatherer. Now in order to click on him, we need to add a box collider and a button sprite the same way we did for the resource nodes. So let's go up here into the gatherer and add a box collider 2D and a button sprite to our character. Okay, great. Let's shift it to increase to about the size, just like that. The character mesh is only instantiated on runtime, but I can see the shadow and I know how roughly how tall the character is. So about that should do the trick. Okay. So we now have the ability to click on this gather. The button sprite is a helper script that helps us click on a box collider 2D. It is part of the CodeMonkey utilities. So now that we have the gather, let's duplicate them. And here let's make unit 2. Exactly the same, let's just push it to the side. Okay. And let's also duplicate some of our resource nodes. So put it in there, a couple more nodes here, and a couple more nodes here. Okay. Now let's go into the gather AI script and capture our clicks. So here's the gather AI script and in here we're going to do very much the same thing we did for the resource node. So we're going to have an event that will fire when the gatherer is clicked and that event will be triggered on the button sprite click func. So let's do pretty much the same thing. Let's copy this, go into our gather AI and let's use it in here. Alright, so on the awake of our gather, we are going to the transform, grabbing the component for the button sprite, and on click func, we are going to fire this event, which is a static event, that will fire whenever the gather is clicked. And here, just to make sure that everything is working, let's do a cmdebug.txt popup on the mouse position, just say click. The cmdebug class is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So let's test it out and see if the size of our colliders are correct. Okay, here are both gatherers and if I click, yep, there you go, you can see the pop-up and if I click outside, nothing and there, click and same thing on this one. Okay, great, we can now click on our gatherers. So now that the clicks are working, let's set it up to catch them in the game handler. So on the game handler in here, just like we did on the resource node, we have a function to capture the clicks, so let's also make another function to capture the gatherer on gatherer click. Let's make this in here. Okay, great. And on the object sender, we actually have the gatherer AI, gatherer AI equals sender as a gatherer AI. So we are now capturing clicks on the game handler and we can actually know who was clicked. 
Let's go to the Gather AI and copy the click onto the game handler to make sure the event is working correctly. So let's see, everything should be working exactly the same, but now the events are going through the game handler rather than directly on the click. So I can go here, I click, and yep, still got the pop-ups. Okay, so events are correctly working, great. Now let's add an array to store all of our gatherers, since in here we just have one, and now we're going to have an array of gatherers, gather AI array, okay? And in order to control the gatherer, we need to know which one has been selected. So let's make a private gather AI for our selected gather AI. So the array contains all of them, and this one contains the one currently selected. And in here, when we click on a resource node, we're going to use the selected gather AI. However, if this is null, then we're going to do nothing. Only if it is different from null, will you actually do it. So if it is selected gather AI is null, no one is selected. And in here, order the selected gatherer AI. All right, so that's our logic for ordering our gatherers. Now let's set it up to be able to set the selected gatherer AI. So in here, when we're capturing the gatherer click events, let's first remove this. And we want this gatherer AI, this is the one that was clicked, we want him to be the selected gatherer AI. So in here, let's make the selected equals this one. Now we need to showcase the selected sprite, so let's go into the gather AI and make a couple of functions. So let's go all the way down here. Let's make a public void show selected sprites. Another one, public void hide selected sprites. So in here we're going to go into the transform and find the selected circle. That is the game object that we set the sprite for the selected circle. And in here, set the game object dot set active to true. And on the hide, we do the opposite. All right. So on the game handler, when we set the selected gather AI, let's tell them to show the selected sprite. All right, let's see if the sprite shows up when we click on it. All right, here are both units. And when I click on them, Yep, the sprite is visible, now that one is selected. And if I click on this one, yep, the sprite is visible, now this one is selected. Okay, great, we can now accurately select and show which one is selected. Now, obviously, there's a mistake here. We, the selected gatherer is this one, but this one is still showing. So we need to tell them to hide the selected sprites before showing the correct one. So let's go in our code on the game handler. Now in here, when we show the selected sprite, before we set the newly selected gatherer AI, Let's test if the selected one, if it is not known, then we're going to tell him to hide his selected sprite. If it is known, then no one is selected, so there's nothing we need to do. So let's see, and now we should correctly only be able to select one gatherer at a time. All right, no one is selected, so if I click on the nodes, nothing happens. Now I can select this one, yep, and now if I click on this one, yep, as you can see, that one was hidden and that one was reselected. So now I can click on this one and this one. Okay, so we are now correctly selecting a specific gatherer and also showcasing the sprite to show which one is currently selected. All right, so with this gatherer selected, I can click on here and yep, I told him to go there. He's gonna mine and keep mining. And now while that one is working, I can click on this one to select him and now I tell him to go there. So now both of them are working completely independent. And as you can see, the logic of searching for a new one is still working. I told this one to go here, he mined both of them and went back. I told that one to go in here, he's mining and he's going to stop once all of those have been depleted. So there you have it. We added support for controlling our gatherers by selecting them and telling them which node area they should mine from. In the next video, we're going to add support for multiple resource node types. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.